You do not need a lot of money to move out of your parents' house. Just $10,000 in a plan, and that's it. Now that's just the minimum amount you'll need, but that's not even the hardest part to moving out of your parents' house. And I'll actually show you why right now, and I'll show it up here on the screen so you're not just looking at me look down. But if we're gonna set up a $10,000 goal, realistically, if you're still living with your parents, you're probably gonna give yourself anywhere between one to three years to achieve that goal. For example, if you're 18, it's probably gonna be your goal to move out by 21. But I'm gonna put the numbers up here on the screen for you to see it better. So, so if you're gonna to aim to have $10,000 saved within a year, you gotta save $834 per month. And if that still looks like a lot to you, we gotta break it down even more. So most of us get paid every two weeks, so we would break it down like that. So if you were going based off of every two weeks, you would put away $417 every couple of weeks. So when you break it down that way, it's not so bad. So we're gonna look at the two year goal, $417 per month or $208.50 every two weeks. And if we're gonna base it off of a three year goal, you're gonna be putting away $378 a month or $189 every two weeks. See, when you break it down, the numbers get a lot less scary. It's really not that bad at all. Now, as you're saving this money and putting it away piece by piece, you're gonna to wanna to put this into a high yield savings account, something like Marcus by Goldman Sachs. I do have an account with them. And if you want to go through my link, click the link down in the description. And by doing so, you'll get a higher interest rate when you put your money into your Marcus by Goldman Sachs account. Now, if you watch the rest of this video and do every single step that I say right when it comes to this video specifically, this $10,000 would be representing about two to three months of your expenses. And as you can see, when it's broken down, it doesn't take that much. And if you still feel like that's a lot of money right now, you have to really reconsider if you're ready to move out right now, because I can promise you one thing, your expenses are gonna far exceed those numbers I posted on the screen earlier. And I wanna take this time now to give you just a few simple tips on taking your savings to the next level and just getting better at saving money in general, just because I know that you have a lot of goals, like besides moving out, you're gonna want to buy a bunch of things, you're gonna want to experience a bunch of things. I just wanna take this time to help you out a little bit. Bit. So one thing you're going to definitely want to make sure you do is make sure that you're automating your savings account and that you have an automatic number coming out, whether it's every week, every other week or every month, whatever works best for you. That way you don't have to remember to save money or remember to transfer from one account to another. You can just have your bank account do it for you. And another thing you can do is make sure before you pay for anything else, you make sure you pay yourself, meaning that you put that money away first. But like I was telling you in the beginning of this video, that's actually the easy part. Saving the money is the easy part because what you're doing right now is you're putting together your emergency fund proactively. So that way when you do move out, everything is gonna be more than okay for you. But all these other steps need to be done properly and this is where the planning comes into play and this is in fact the hardest part when it comes to moving out and I just want to point out one thing I've been very good at planning since I was like 18 19 years old because at that point I really had to be but I didn't actually realize how good I was at planning until I really sat down and tried to plan something and I, I took a good hour couple hours and this was like over the course of days and days planning and mapping out my future and the reason I say that is because a lot of you might be in the same boat where you're very good at planning but you don't realize it until you actually get a chance to sit down and map your future around something that you actually want to do like move out of your parents house so i'm going to help you out there's going to be a few questions you want to ask yourself and by the way if you're liking this video right now i want you to comment the word bout out just like what's on the screen and i want you to click the link in the description to hit the move out guide and with that move out guide comes a full year's worth of information coming straight from me to your email inbox helping you on your journey to move out of your parents house and do so properly so you're as successful as possible shameless plug whatever anyway and the questions you need to answer to is how much money does my full-time job pay me and you you definitely need a full-time job and you want to know how much they pay you after taxes what area will i be living in and what is the cost of living in that area and you need to be asking yourself these questions because you need to understand how much you can afford early on and i talk about that more in my video about how to save for your first apartment but i want to bring it up again because it's very good to get an idea of how much it costs to live in that general vicinity whether it's gas groceries, how much it is typically to go out to eat, get a haircut, you know, just your basic 
maintenance items, how much gym memberships are, things that you're already into doing that you want to make sure that you can keep up. Now, if you end up staying on the same side of town as like where your parents are, you don't really have to worry too much about this, but you still want to get a good estimate so you're not baffled by the fact that you're on your own now and you have to pay for all of these things. And of course, you want to factor in a few vices. Some of y'all like to go out on the weekend or have a drink every now and then. Some of you might go Amazon shopping every now and then, and that's all cool, but you got to start factoring that in because what you're creating now is your overall budget for when you do move out. So of course you're gonna be looking at how much does rent cost in this general area and of course you're gonna to wanna to actually pull up to these places and see what's up and, and actually see are they who they say they are online? Do the apartments look as good as they do on the internet? Is the area as safe and nice as it looks on the internet? Is the staff kind and professional? Do they have good amenities? These are gonna be things that you just wanna look into. And when you look at all these expenses, you're gonna to wanna to think about the 50, 30, 20 rule. And within the first 50%, that's your necessities. And when it comes to your necessities, there should be no more than 30% of your income going into your rent. So you'll wanna reach as far below that number as possible while still living in a decent area that looks nice, feels nice, and is safe. That way, your other 20% within that 50% that we just talked about, you'll have more freedom to do more with. You'll be able to grocery shop more. You'll be able to get gas, more haircuts. And of course, your transportation, especially if you have a car note, you're gonna have a lot more flexibility and freedom to spend more money on stuff like that if you make sure that your rent is dialed in properly. Just make sure you're basing this off of your after-tax income, and that way you won't be making any mistakes with that. So those questions are pretty much breaking down your needs. So what I just talked about, that's 50% of your take-home income right there. So now we're gonna talk about the 30%, which represents wants. It's gonna be things like Netflix, going out, having fun, going to a football game, going to a basketball game, going to the mall, getting a nice watch, getting a nice pair of shoes, just anything that you associate with leisure. And then you wanna add these all up and now you wanna start factoring those in. And you might have some of these right now. You might be paying for Netflix right now or Amazon Prime or Audible or Spotify. So you can look at these right now and see how much they cost in addition to everything else that we've already talked about in this video. One of the big expenses when you first move out, and I don't want you touching your $10,000 for this, is going to be furniture. And so you want to start thinking about how much this furniture really costs. And I'll give you a hint, it's expensive. So you want to start looking at your basic things. You want to start looking at what you would prioritize because a lot of people kind of want to, you know, run and jump through hoops and get everything at once. And while that's the more comfortable option, it's not the best option for your pockets. So for me, I prioritize the bed over anything. Got to have my bed. Once the bed's out of the way, now I'm gonna start looking at the couch, I'm gonna start looking at everything else. I already had TVs and stuff like that. So you're already gonna start off with certain things. Just look at what your priority is. And you can start saving for that right now. That could be an additional $5,000 that you wanna save on top of the $10,000 that we already talked about. That way, when you do move out, you can dedicate that $5,000 to furniture and you may not even spend it all and you can put some of that money back into your emergency fund and be good to go. So you look at your needs, you look at everything you're gonna need when you move in, you're gonna be thinking about pots, pans, toiletries, towels, Clorox wipes, cleaners, a vacuum, a broom, bookshelves, covers for your bed, pillows. I mean, a lot of these things sound really obvious, but you would be surprised at how many things are forgotten when you're in the pursuit of moving out and you're packing everything up. And like, you got to really think about that. And another thing you got to think about is how much is it going to cost? Like how much are my overall expenses going to cost me? And while you're thinking about that, you got to think about what does 20% of my take home pay look like? Because that is exactly how much you're supposed to be saving every single month, minimum. You can do more than that when you want to later on, but when you start out, typically you wanna shoot for 20%. And so once you figure all of that out, you now have a plan. Because the thing is, we already talked about who, what, when, where, why. Who is you? And now you're looking at the what, what, what needs to be done to move out. So you need to save at least five figures and that's gonna represent two to three months worth of your income. And a lot of your time is gonna be spent looking at what does the rent cost in all these different areas that I'm looking at potentially living at. And when you move out is gonna depend on what your plan is. Do you wanna move out in, in a year or three years? And how tenacious are you about reaching that goal? Because to be honest, you can reach your goal in six months if you want to. 
but the more realistic goal is going to be between one to three years. And once you start figuring these things out, and once you start doing something every single day to help move the needle on moving out, you'll figure out where it is that you're going to move. You're going to figure out exactly how much it's going to cost to live there and what the general cost of living is in that area and if you can afford it or not and how much you'll be able to save by living in that area and not having to move back into your parents' house again because you'll have known what you're going to do with that money well in advance and you're going to have $10,000 on the side. And if you wanted to, you would have an additional $5,000, $3,000 to $5,000 for stuff like furniture and other items that you're definitely going to want to have in your apartment and that you're going to need to have in your apartment. And we already know the why. We know that you're probably getting tired of living with your parents' house and you want some independence. You want some peace for yourself. You just want to relax. You might have a great relationship with your parents, but the thing is, there is nothing like getting your own place, which is why you have to ask yourself this question. Can I afford all this by myself? Because the thing is, if you can't, you're not ready yet. And that's okay. You'll either need to stay with your parents a little longer or have roommates. But the reason why you should think very heavily before doing that is because things happen with roommates all the time. If your roommate loses their job, if the roommate can't pay their rent, or if they just up and leave, you're going to be left to pick up the pieces. So you got to figure out now if you can handle these expenses all by yourself. But that's why we more than prepared you at the very beginning of this video with how much money you need at the minimum. And you can add however much you want to add to the minimum. But if you just protect yourself from the very beginning and have that financial cushion and you don't touch it, like you don't use that for furniture, you don't use that for anything else. Like, yeah, you have money there, but it's there to protect you in the future. And it's going to be accumulating interest because it'll be in a high yield savings account like we talked about from now and forever on until you decide to actually reach into that account and use that money for something. But ideally, you won't touch that unless it's absolutely positively an emergency. And if you follow these tips, you will be financially stable all throughout the time that you've moved out of your parents' house. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't do this. A lot of people just aren't told or taught properly. And that's the thing. When people take shortcuts and they don't want to save the five figures, look, I have designed this video to help you in today's economy. Because when I moved out, I had like just a little over a thousand dollars in my pocket. If I were to do that today, I wouldn't have made it like that. So I'm basing this all on today's economy. And so if people start skipping steps and just kind of doing whatever they want to now, that can lead you to being just like everybody else. And I'm not being mean by saying this, but most of America is living paycheck to paycheck or paycheck to credit card. And they're in debt and they're stressed out all the time and they have to work all the time just to keep up with their bills and to keep up with the debt that they're drowning in, just trying to stay afloat. And I just wanna let you know, you can do this. You can absolutely do this. It's gonna take some time, but it does not take a lot of money to do this. It's just gonna take some patience and it's gonna take a lot of planning. The money part is the easy part but you want to plan everything out very strategically to set you up for success the best because if you don't you can fall into the traps that everybody else falls into spending money on things that everybody else spends money on and then having the same level of happiness that everybody else has and i don't know if you've looked around lately but not as many people are happy that i feel should be and i'm not going to say it's all money related but we really need to think about these things. Don't jump into something that you're not ready for. You have so much time right now. If you're gonna give yourself one to three years, spend time every single day thinking about this and looking at where to stay and, and visiting some apartment complexes and just, just see what is available. See what, look into what kind of work you're gonna be doing. Look into, are you staying in the same state or are you moving to a different state? Are you gonna be in the same city, moving to a different city? And even if you stay in the same city, what part of the city are you staying in? Because if you end up staying downtown, you're gonna be paying a little more. But you might not mind that because you, you like the social atmosphere of being downtown and maybe there's more opportunity for growth for you in your career if you are downtown. So think about these tips, apply these tips, download the move out guide and welcome yourself to a year's worth of free information coming directly from me where I direct you to certain videos and other sources of information that are going to help you out on your journey and help you reach your goal. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.